The Barry Yampo Library is a library about the history of science. Any major name virtually that you can think of, Mendeleev, Aristotle, Pliny, Darwin, Newton, they're all represented in this sale. Beyond that, it really has a much narrower focus. It's about how man, scientists, have struggled over the centuries to understand the natural world, organize it and systematize it, and see how we as a species fit into it. In early December, Sotheby's is very pleased to be selling a first selection of books from the library of Barry Yampol. Barry Yampol was particularly interested in mining and mineralogy, but the collection goes far beyond that into physics and natural history and chemistry to actually become a highly important collection illustrating the history of science really from the dawn of printing in the 15th century through the 20th century. Perhaps no work in the library better illustrates man's quest to understand and organize the natural world than Mendeleev's first periodic table, which appears in a book that he wrote as an introduction to chemistry. It's two volumes. The first volume was published in 1869, and the periodic table fits on one little page, about five by seven inches, and has just a handful of elements. Two years later, in 1871, when the second volume came out, the table was now expanded to about four or five times the length. It no longer fit on a single page. It's a fold-out plate. And what's most interesting was he knew there were things that he didn't know. And he knew that there were more elements out there. And he actually guessed their atomic weights and put them in the right spot, but didn't know what they were. Instead, used a question mark. Another way that the Mendeleev is emblematic of the collection is that we see from volume one to volume two the growth of knowledge. And we see that throughout. You see these struggles to understand what is the earth? Why do volcanoes erupt? Why are there different minerals? The beginning of trying to understand those sort of questions and then through another generation of scientists and another generation and people going back and editing you see the consensus of what the world really is beginning to build. Many of the earliest books in the Ampol collection are essentially encyclopedias. They cover a wide range of knowledge and a wide range of subjects because this was at a time when it was possible to try at least to contain everything that humanity knew within two covers. The first collected edition of Aristotle's works printed in the original Greek by Aldous Minucius in Venice at the end of the 15th century. Two of the most important 15th century editions of Pliny, who wrote this encyclopedic compendium of ancient knowledge about the world. We also have a book from 1472, and when we talk about early printing, that's getting very close to the beginning of it, written by Isidore of Seville, and that book includes the very first printed map ever to appear in a book. It's not large, it's a little three by three woodcut, and it represents the world very much like a diagram in a very simple view showing just three continents, Europe, Asia, and Africa. This was decades before Columbus. Most of the earliest printed books don't have many illustrations, or if they do, they're very simple. But by the time we get into the 18th and 19th century, there are some wonderful illustrated works. One of the most famous and always startling is Robert Hooke's book on microscopes in which he depicts enlarged insects, fleas, mites, things that couldn't be observed by the naked eye. And so you have these plates that are so big they don't fit into the book unless they're folded up. So you unfold them like an old road map, if anyone remembers those, and you have an image of a flea this big as though it had stepped out of a Vincent Price horror movie. Another interesting illustrated book is William Hamilton's study on volcanoes. He was actually an English envoy to Italy and made many trips to Vesuvius to watch it erupt. And there are these fantastic colored engravings that almost look like original watercolors with the night sky illumined by the lava 
pouring out of the top of Vesuvius. That's actually connected to one of the earliest authors represented, Pliny, who actually died going to watch the first historic eruption of Vesuvius. He also depicted the resulting lava and minerals that were thrown up, and those are depicted as well in a more scientific and perhaps less dramatic narrative fashion. The Barry Yampol Collection is a library of libraries, but all about, we see these things, but what are they? Can we systematize them? Can we understand them? Can we understand how they relate together? It reminds me of Wunderkammer, that is, collections of wonderful things, the way people used to collect, and they would have seashells, and they would have some taxidermied animals, and they'd have some diamonds. And in a way, that's sort of what the Yampol Library is like. <laughs>